guys, Max here, and welcome back to another tutorial. As you saw, we're creating this very simple letter animation that should cover some very basic stuff inside of After Effects and teach you some fundamentals. This tutorial is geared towards more of a beginner level kind of thing, so if you're a veteran, don't watch this. Other than that, let's get started. And if you're interested, feel free to download my project file in the description to check the workout. No problem. Okay, so here we are in After Effects, and as we can see, it's uh, the letter M that draws out. Now, now you can use this technique to make multiple letters, but in this case, we are just making an M. Now, this is not actual font, it is just shapes that build an M. So let's start from scratch. Okay, so inside of After Effects, I'm in my project panel right here. I'm going to right click and do New Composition. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'll do 1920. By 1080, you can choose whatever resolution you want. 60 frames per second. Duration, 15 seconds. Composition names, call this Take 2. Just like so. Now what we'll do is grab our shape tool at the top here. I currently have it set to rounded rectangle, but if you click and hold the shape tool, it actually drops down to different shapes. So we'll do rounded rectangle once again. And I will draw out a rectangle. Let's do a little bit longer this time. Now, um, once you drag out the rectangle, you can see a little dot pops up, the rectangle pops up. What we want to do is actually grab this tool right here called Pan Behind, and actually click on the shape layer right here, click, this dot pops back up, and we can move this to the center of the shape. In this case, let's move it to the center by holding Control on our keyboard, and doing that. All right, now what we want to do is actually drop down on the shape layer, drop down on rectangle one, and drop down on rectangle path, I think, and then roundness. Let's increase the roundness all the way so it looks like an actually fully rounded rectangle. And we need to go back one step. Let's grab this anchor point once again and actually move it to the top up here. Hold control to ping it to the top, right on the edge, just like so. Now the next step is to create a mask around this, uh, this shape. So what we'll do is we'll right click shape layer one Go to mask and then new mask. Creates a square around it. What we'll do is actually um, use our pointer tool right here and actually move out this mask a little bit. The next step is to create an edged mask. It's kind of a curve of the mask. What we'll do is actually grab our little tool up here called convert tool, called convert tool. You might see it as pen tool, but what we'll do is hold, click and hold and drag it to add vertex and click a new vertex on this line right here. Then we'll go back to our pointer tool, drag this down like so, click down on our pen tool once again and do convert vertex tool and do this, do this one, and that one, that's fine. Then we'll click back to on our uh, selection tool, grab this vertex and actually make a nice, you know, rounded point, about like so. Now what we'll do is actually Click our pointer tool once again, click the shape, um, actually click this little mask dot right here, and highlight all of these and move it down to about right here. Now what we'll do is actually drop down on our mask in shape layer one, drop down on mask one, drop and uh, keyframe the path by clicking this little stopwatch. It creates a keyframe. Go back in time, highlight these three points right here on the mask with the mask selected, and move it up like so. Now what this does is actually creates a new keyframe on our timeline of the mask that will now trace out. Probably needs to go a little faster, about one second. Like so. And if, if we actually hover over this keyframe, click on it and zoom in a good bit, make sure the, the cursor is on this keyframe, we can actually modify this mask a little bit by clicking on these points and actually moving it closer, moving it closer. So we actually have a nice curve on this. So the, the, the actual mask itself looks like it's being drawn out. So it looks a little smoother. Now, what we'll do is highlight both these keyframes and click this tool right here called the Graph Editor. Okay, now that we're in our graph tool, make sure that we are showing the speed graph. So choose graph type, make sure you're showing your speed graph, and we'll highlight this keyframe right here and move it over. Highlight this one 
and do the same thing and move it over. Which creates this nice, more animated motion of our animation, which is kind of nice. Okay, so next up, we need to actually create our letter from this shape. So what we'll do is we will click Command D or Control D on our keyboard for a new shape. Click R on our keyboard and we'll rotate this over. Just like so. We'll do Command D or Control D on Shape Layer 1 once again and move it over to here. And then once again on Shape Layer 3, duplicate it again. Hit R on our keyboard and rotate it the other direction the same amount of degrees. So this is 23. And then grab Shape Layer 4, Shape Layer 3, and actually move it over some. Now these aren't lining up exactly the way I want them to, so I'm going to move this over a little more. And maybe align them at the top here. So this is like perfectly in, in cornered with this one. Almost perfect. Same thing for this. Now make sure these line up. Not bad, that definitely looks like an M. Now the next step is to add drop shadows to these to give it that little depthy texture look. So go to our effects and presets, type drop shadow, drag a drop shadow onto the second layer, right. drag the drop shadow onto the second layer. Let's do the distance, pretty far. Let's turn it this way. That looks kind of cool. Um, let's turn the background off by clicking this toggle transparency grid and actually turning up the softness a good bit. I'd buy that. Now let's take this drop shadow, copy and paste it, com control C, and let's paste it to this one. And for kicks and giggles, let's add a white background on this one. So right click new solid, white background, drag, drag it down to here. And let's grab all these shapes and let's move it over to the center. Kind of looks like a Netflix sort of animation. Um, so right now it drags out like this, but we want it to kind of caddy the drag. So shape layer one goes first, shape layer three goes last, shape layer four goes next to last, shape layer two. So this one goes right here. Shape layer three is going to shape layer three is going to go very last, and shape layer four is going to go right here. So we could probably closen these up a little bit. So this can be a little sooner than this one. I like to make sh noises when I do this stuff. Oh, but I did notice something. We need to rearrange one of our shapes because it's, it's, it's shaping out right here. We want it to actually go from here. What we'll do is actually kind of grab the shape and we will hit uh, R on our keyboard for the rotation and we will rotate it all the way around about like so and we'll move it down to here. Sorry, I don't know that. And we'll line it back up right there. Actually grab our shape again and actually move it over so realign, rotate, it's totally fine. Now, let's take the drop shadows and actually change the opacity down to about 25% on all of them. All the, all the ones we put drop shadows on. Right. Now we did our first pass of the shape. If this is all you need to make like a Netflix styled animation, that works. You can also play with your drop shadow from here to make it more in tune of what you want. Cool. Now we want to create that layering looking effect that shows them all kind of cattering down. So let's highlight all these shapes. I want my last one to be red. So my first one will highlight all these shapes. Uh, click the fill and actually change it to, I don't know, kind of an off green. We can start with that. That's fine. Highlight all these layers and duplicate them just like we did before by hitting Control D on a PC keyboard or Command D on a Mac keyboard. Now we have all the same shapes. Um, duplicate it on top of each other. But from here, we'll click the little blue box for the layer and actually change it to yellow. Um, let's not change it to yellow. Let's change it to like aqua and move it down a little bit and then change the fill to a new color. 
So now what we have is this happening because we moved the shapes down. And from here, you can just kind of repeat the process by grabbing your latest shape um, and just hitting Command D, moving it down. I like to change the layer color. Let's do, you know, peach this time, change the fill color to a darker blue, uh, click Command D once again on our colors, Command D, move it down, change the fill to, I guess it's purple now, purple, yeah, and then uh, change it to a different color, too similar, dark green. Uh, Command D, do it one more time, and we'll finally kind of land on our uh, are red and change this finally to the red layer so now if we play this out as long as it can finish yeah I can finish up to here uh, we can see we can kind of squeeze our layer down we can see that it creates this nice color effect you might want to spread it out a little bit but that's the gist of the effect Maybe a little sooner. It kind of gets faster as it goes. Cool. I'll take that. Yeah, and you can play with the, how many layers you want to play with. It doesn't matter. So now, we have one more step to really kind of make this pop a little more. So what we'll do is we will actually highlight all these layers. Um, not the background, though. Uh, we will right-click all these layers and do pre-compose. Opens up a new dialog and call this M or whatever you want to call it. Now it's just a single shape. It's like a single layer. And what we'll do, and those drop shadows are super strong. This is why we decreased the, decreased the percent of the drop shadow before. So, I mean, if you're really smart, you could actually go in really quick and change these all to like 10%. So I changed all the drop shadows down to 10%, makes it a little easier. And now we have this nice, subtly built drop shadow animation. And the final step is to go into our effects and presets, type in CCF Force Motion Blur, drop it onto this layer, Force Motion Blur pops up. Let's change the shutter angle a little bit. As you can see, it creates like, it creates the nice like shadowy edge. We can increase the shutter angle to make it more dramatic of a shadow and increase the motion blur, blur samples to actually make it a smoother motion blur. Um, and from here, we can actually just play our animation. And as you can see after a quick sped up render in the video, we have this nice M animation it kind of looks like a Netflix styled thing. Not super sure. It's kind. Of, it's reminded me. It's the the white and red. That's kind of figuring out. But this is a very simple animation that I just wanted to cover. It uh, opens up some. In my opinion, I think it kind of covers some fundamental things you can start getting used to in After Effects, and that's what I like about tutorials. You know, a tutorial is not just a one step to an end product of creating something cool. I like learning things along the way. I see a lot of good content out there, and when I especially follow tutorials on my own, I watch things I have to learn all the time to teach you guys. Um, I'll learn more important stuff during the process of creating something than actually what I was there to create in the first place. The final product is cool, it looks great, but I like figuring out the steps, what it takes to do these things. Because whenever I see effects online, I see some kind of cool animation or some uh, VFX thing, I like to deconstruct and kind of re-engineer how I would create that. And doing things like this really helps me do that and um, learning the steps involved into creating something. So that's a big help. Other than that, I'm Max. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for being a part of the channel. If you are new to the channel, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. And other than that, I guess I'll get you guys in the next video. Peace.